Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential system. We have two equations, 3 to the power x times 5 to the power y equals 75, and 3 to the power y times 5 to the power x equals 45. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and do the following. I'm going to take these two equations and multiply together. So I'm going to get 3 to the x, 5 to the y, multiply by 3 to the y, 5 to the x, equals 75 times 45. Great. So from here, we can combine the powers of 3. And when you multiply two powers, you're going to add the exponents. So this is going to become 3 to the power x plus y. And then the other two is going to make 5 to the power x plus y. And now on the right hand side, I can write the 75 as I want to break it down into its prime factors. Uh, that would be 3 times 25. So 3 to the first power times 5 to the second. And 45 can be written as 3, 3 squared times 5 because it's 9 times 5. So we're going to get this from here. And then on the left hand side, notice that the exponents are the same. So we do have a rule that says whenever you have something like a to the n times b to the n, you can basically combine them by multiplying the bases and using the same exponent. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and do that on the left hand side. That gives us 3 times 5, which is 15. That's our new base. And that's going to be raised to the power x plus y. I don't think I need parentheses there. And on the right hand side, I get 3 to the power 1 times 3 to the power 2, which is going to be 3 to the third, multiply by 5 to the third, because I'm also adding the exponents here. And then this can be written as by the same rule, since they have the same exponent, this can be written as 15 to the power 3. Now, let me clarify something. I'm not necessarily looking for integer solutions here. That's why I didn't say, okay, x and y are integers. We didn't know they would be integers, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so that is not an assumption, assumption at, uh, at least. So from here we get x plus y is equal to 3. All right, so can you guess the next step? If you said division, yes, you got it. So we're going to divide these equations. Let's go ahead and divide 3 to the x times 5 to the y by 3 to the power y times 5 to the x. So what do you have uh, in the numerator? That is going to be 75, and this is going to be 45. And that can definitely be simplified, right? Think of a common factor. What would go into these numbers? I can think of 5, so we can write this as 5 times 15 and 5 times 9. But then I noticed that 15 and 9 still have common factors, which is a 3. So in other words, both of these numbers are divisible by 15, right? So 15 is actually the greatest common factor. So let's go ahead and clear this up and start over with 15. So that's going to give us 15 times 5 divided by 15 times 3. And since 5 and 3 are relatively prime, that means we found the greatest common factor. Okay, great. And 5 and 3 are actually good numbers. That's what we wanted to have. But how do you handle the left-hand side? The left-hand side is a little different when you divide there's actually more than one way to write this. For example, you can go ahead and uh, divide uh, the powers of 3. That's going to give you 3 to the power x minus y. And then the 5s are going to give you 5 to the power y minus x. And if you set it equal to 5 over 3, then you're kind of running into a problem. And the problem is neither the bases nor the exponents are the same on the left-hand side. But I do have a 3 and a 5 on both sides, so that's promising. So here's what I can do, though. Even though the exponents are different, uh, they're related. How? x minus y and y minus x are opposites, which means I can definitely use the properties of negative exponents, so I can negate one of them and flip. Flip and negate or negate and flip. Okay, this is how it works whenever you have something like x to the power negative n that can be written as 1 over x to the power n. Of course, it can also be written as 1 over x in parentheses to the power n. And whenever you have 1 over x to the power negative n, it just means x to the power n. So you flip and negate and flip and negate. Make sense? 
Okay, I hope it does. So we, we have to pick though one of them. And I'm looking at this like five is in the numerator on the right hand side. So why don't I keep this five and flip this one? And of course, it's not just flip, flip and negate. Let's do it, okay? We're gonna flip and negate, which means we're gonna write this as, and I can kind of explain that too. Like, it's not like, I don't want you to memorize like flip and negate, but that sometimes helps. I'm basically trying to write it as a three to the power negative one times y minus x because it's the opposite of that. And now this becomes three to the power negative one to the power y minus x, and that will be one over three to the power one minus x. That's what I mean by flip and negate. Make sense? Okay. I negate the exponent and flip the base. Great. Now let's go ahead and plug it in there since I already have it. This is uh, 3 to the power x minus y, and this is 5 to the power y minus x. No, notice that now I got the same I got the same exponents, right? So what I can do is multiply the bases, 1 over 3 times 5, and then use a common exponent, right? And on the right-hand side, I have 5 thirds. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit, multiply 1 third by 5. That's going to give you 5 over 3 to the power y minus x equals 5 over 3. And of course, this means 5 over 3 to the power 1. Therefore, from here, you can conclude that y minus x is equal to 1. Okay, is that going to help us? Absolutely. Take a look. We already had x plus y is equal to 3. x plus y is equal to 3. Now I got another equation, and this becomes a system, right? I mean, this system is very easy to solve. Just add them up, x cancels out, you get 2y equals 4, which means y is equal to 2, and x is equal to 1, because their sum is 3 or their difference is 1. Make sense? Great. But how does this help? Well, I was trying to solve for x and y, and I got it. Okay, let's go ahead and quickly talk about the second method. The second method is kind of different because it uses, the second method uses logs, so you could guess at this point what how that's going to proceed but let me quickly show you how that's going to work so i can basically go ahead and l and both sides you can use any base you want log base 3 base 10 whatever but i'm just going to use ln because it's uh, it's natural natural log right so let's go ahead and ln both sides here and here ln 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 okay Great. So from the first equation, let's call this first and let's call this second. From the first equation, I get ln 3 to the power x plus ln 5 to the power y equals ln 75. And this turns into x ln 3 plus y ln 5 equals ln 75. And from the second equation, I get ln 3 to the y plus ln 5 to the x equals ln 45. I'm going to write it there because I'm just going to simplify it here. And that gives me y ln 3 plus x ln 5 equals ln 45. Now at this point, here's what you can do. Since you're trying to solve for either x or y first, let's go ahead and eliminate one of them. So let's eliminate y, and don't ask why. We can go ahead and multiply the first equation by ln 3 on both sides, and multiply the second equation by negative ln 5, because that's going to get rid of the y values. And then from here, you get the following x times ln 3 squared plus y times ln 5 times ln 3 is equal to ln 3 times ln 75. And then here we get negative y ln 5 times ln 3 minus x times ln 5 squared equals negative ln 5 times ln 45. Awesome. When you add these up, the coefficients of y are opposite, so they're going to cancel out. That was the goal. x times ln 3 squared minus x times ln 5 squared equals ln 3 ln 75 minus ln 5 ln 45. And then from here, you can basically take out an x and ln 3 squared minus ln 5 squared. By the way, notice that that is a difference of two squares, so I'm hoping to get something similar from the right-hand side. But you kind of need to break this down into ln 25 plus ln 3. And this one is going to be ln 9 plus ln 5. And then this will be 5 squared. This will be 3 squared. So on and so forth. And that should give you the same answer. Okay? What is the answer? x equals 1 and y equals 2. 
end. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.